Hi, welcome to the very first lesson of unit three, the periodic table. Today's lesson is the history of the periodic table. And I'm going to ask you, what are some patterns in nature that you already know? I'm sure you know a bunch. One that comes to mind for me is the phases of the moon. The history of the periodic table begins in 1863. If we're talking about the modern periodic table. Many people have attempted the periodic table, but the one that has stood the test of time was made in 1863 by a scientist and college professor named Dmitry Mendeleev. It's also sometimes pronounced Mendeleev. I prefer Mendeleev, but I never met the guy. Um, <laughs> at the time, there were 56 elements that were known, and they were being discovered about one per year. And... Um, Mendeleev was teaching college chemistry and his students were working with all of these elements and they were printed on cards. The information that's on our current periodic table was on cards. So a student would sit down to take a test and would have a whole bunch of cards and they'd be flipping through, okay, I need the information for potassium. And they would go to look for it and then they would look for another one. And it was kind of like crazy fuzzy, but because they were being discovered so quickly, the card system worked pretty well because you would just get a new card when they discovered the new element, but it was getting to be too much. And Mendeleev was thinking like, there has to be something better for my students. So here he is. Um, he was put on a stamp at some point. Um, like I said, he was from Russia and he figured out a way to organize all of the elements kind of in a way that made sense. So he took all of the elements at the time and put them in order of mass from lightest to heaviest. And when that happened, he found a pattern to their reactivity. It was kind of like this pattern was cyclical or periodic. It just stopped and then started again. And it kind of like the faces of the moon, it just kept repeating itself over and over. So it's kind of like here, we have square, circle, triangle, hexagon, square, circle, triangle, hexagon. He saw super reactive with water, makes a strong base, silver, shiny metal, poison. Reacts with water, silver, shiny metal. And it went in the same pattern over and over and over again. So when he found that, the pattern of the reactivity or the properties of these elements, he decided that he was going to list the pattern one across. And when the pattern started over, he'd make a new row and list them together. So this would have been the lightest one and this would have been the heaviest one. And then kind of what happened was that all of the, the elements that were in the same column had the same characteristic or property to them. So if this were the periodic table, this would be group one, the alkali metals that react very violently with water. And then on the right side, we would have our inert noble gases. So across the row, the pattern is executed. <laughs> um, so that is called the period. And then in the same group are the elements that have that property or trait. And that is called cross-classifying. When things in a specific place have something in common with their group and something in common with their period that goes across. So for instance, all of the squares are gonna react very violently with water, but all of the pink ones are the heavy elements carrying out the pattern. Plenty of scientists have tried to put together a periodic table, but Mendeleev was one of the few who stood out. And the reason is because when there was some type of hole in his pattern, he left an empty space. These elements, remember, were being discovered at a rate of about one a year. So when he found that there was a missing place in his pattern, he said, I bet this element hasn't been discovered yet. We'll find it. His original periodic table looked something like this picture here with some gaps. Now, what makes Mendeleev so, so cool is that he specifically made a prediction for what this element underneath aluminum was going to look like and what its properties were going to be. And everybody kind of thought he was crazy. But he decided that he was going to call it Eka aluminum, which meant one from aluminum. And he was going to predict the properties before it was even discovered because his pattern was so good. So he knew that it was going to be a shiny silver metal. It was going to have a crazy low melting point and 
it was its mass was going to fit into the table the melting and boiling point were going to fit into the pattern of his table and insanely enough when they found gallium it fit perfectly in the space that mendeleev had left in his periodic table unfortunately this discovery was made after mendeleev had died so he never got to see how the element that he predicted fit into the table. Kind of to pay homage to Mendeleev, we now have element 101, which is named Mendelevium in his honor. There is one tiny difference between Mendeleev's original periodic table and the one that we use now, aside from the fact that there are more elements on it. Um, it has now been organized so that the periodic table is in order of atomic number. There are a few places on the periodic table where our mass kind of goes out of order for the sake of the atomic number. This is largely related to the number of neutrons, but that's all right. It happens with cobalt and nickel. Although cobalt is a smaller atomic number than nickel, it's actually a little bit heavier. That's what I have for you on Mendeleev and the history of the periodic table. Make sure to leave any questions you have in the comments section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye!